welcome to another episode of Beer for Breakfast ABV. I am Danielle from The Morning Show. Marty and Danielle's in the morning on 91X. As always, I have my beer drinking partner in crime with me, Brewmaster Carl Strauss, Paul Segura. Welcome. Yes. <laughs> oh, I, be I, better, I better get ready. <laughs> I am so insanely stoked to be welcoming Sierra Nevada on Beer for Breakfast ABV. This is Terrence, and he's the brand manager for Sierra Nevada. And before we really get into this, Terrence, um, cheers to 40 years of Sierra Nevada this week, November 15th. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it's kind of it's an it's an amazing honor, uh, you know, to to represent Sierra Nevada, and you know, I've worked there 26 years, so I've seen a good portion of that uh, of that 40. Um, you know, we were uh, 100,000 barrels whenever I first started, and uh, started as a graveyard brewer, and uh, kind of did a uh, did a lot of different things for the brewery. But right now, I do uh, kind of brand manager, product manager, uh, kind of wrangle in uh, a lot of our small release beers. So where the beers we're going to drink today, uh, we'll start out in maybe like an e-commerce platform or mm -hmm. just in our pub. That'd be something I would manage uh, until it moves on to a uh, larger scale and uh, that kind of stuff. So uh, I love it's... that. I feel like a good majority of people's first craft beer they ever had was probably a Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, a Torpedo. I know for me, it was definitely Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. That was what started me on my craft beer adventure. What about you, Paul? Uh, my first Sierra was probably Pale Ale as well. In fact, um, when I started home brewing in like 89, I would go to the store and buy six packs and I would put it in the fridge for a day or two and then carefully pour like the, <laughs> most of the beer off and then swirl the bottle to get that yeast in suspension and pour a couple of those into my fermenter and boom, it would take off like right away. Yeah. So I, you know, everybody who's homebrewed knows that Sierra Nevada uh, bottle conditions that pale ale and that there's still live yeast in there and it's great for homebrewers. So on behalf of homebrewers everywhere, and, you know, not just homebrewers, everybody in the beer industry owes a debt of gratitude for Sierra Nevada for paving the way for all of us craft brewers that have come along, you know, afterwards. And, um, you know, you guys have, have made people feel comfortable drinking craft beer, well-made craft beer. It's always been clean and consistent and of character. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. And, and you know, uh, actually, uh, kind of my, my roots are uh, similar to yours, Paul. I, uh, uh, I I think I had my very first Sierra Nevada Pale Ale in the parking lot of a Grateful Dead concert um, uh, in, in Oakland. Um, and we were home brewers. Uh, so I so I did home brewing. Um, and, you know, I really actually fell in love with uh, Sierra Nevada brand before um, kind of deciding I was going to go to UC Davis and study fermentation science and get a degree in, in making beer. And, and, uh, honestly, that was, uh, I had, I had two places I really wanted to work. It was, uh, anchor brewing or, uh, Sierra Nevada, uh, growing up in the North state. So, um, I guess I, uh, I got a dream job. <laughs> so well, to say. Anchor now, would have been a great place as well. Yeah. Uh, both of them are fine breweries and you can't go wrong. I mean, um, yeah. I would have loved to have worked at either place as well. But since you brought up UC Davis, I will also say cheers to Dr. Michael Lewis. Yes. Um, that was my instructor. Good man. Mine too. Well, let's get right into it. I mean, we, okay. obviously we know about Pale Ale, Torpedo, Celebration. However, this is my first time trying the Wild Little Things Slightly Sour Ale. Terrence, tell us all about this. Uh, so this was a uh, kind of a, yeah, I don't know if you're familiar with a uh, uh, hazy little thing, uh, which we launched a couple of years ago and it's highly successful um, IPA. And uh, our brand manager for this particular beer uh, really kind of wanted to branch out and kind of, kind of follow that path of that, uh, the little things brand. Uh, so kind of really making like 
uh, very sessionable versions and very good versions of uh, different types of styles of beer. And so obviously we did kind of a hazy IPA on the first one, but this is a, a take on a almost a Goza style beer. It doesn't have the salt that you would find in a Goza, um, but it's it's got some um, uh, a little bit of sourness that comes from a mash sour, what's called a mash sour. Uh, where we're going to take a little bit of uh, mm -hmm. uh, lactobacillus uh, bacteria and create a little bit of a, a sour uh, mm -hmm. character. And it's got about 8% eight, 8 of that in, in this particular beer. And so that that's what adds that kind of tartness. It's not necessarily like a, a sour beer, for instance, something that you would, um, you know, find in a cork and cage type of bottle or overly sour. It's, uh, it's more about drinkability. And, uh, and what I love about this beer is, um, uh, the strawberry notes come through, you know, it's got guava, strawberry, and hibiscus. A lot of the color actually comes from the hibiscus. And we actually, uh, if you're familiar with our other beers, torpedo, uh, for instance, uses a piece of equipment that we, uh, designed and call it the torpedo it's just an external uh tank that we run beer through uh to extract out hop character well that's what we do with the hibiscus so we actually put uh grind up the hibiscus and put it in the torpedo so we do it on the cold side so it really just adds color and a little bit of flavor uh kind of some uh, floral characteristics to the beer but this is really about the strawberry and about the guava and uh you know and and, and just Super drinkable and very refreshing, in my opinion. Oh, in the city of never-ending summer, this is the perfect San Diego beer. This is breakfast beer. <laughs> I found that the hibiscus adds a little bit of tartness or kind of a, you know, a little zing in the finish as well, I think. Yeah, a little, a little bit, not, not to go to a negative direction, but like a little bit of astringency that's kind of, you know, it's there. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, kind of bites your, uh, bites your tongue a little. So, and oh, it's I know you've been known to take a beer with you on a hike. Is this a good hiking beer? Absolutely. Like I won't even I wouldn't think twice. I'd probably bring two of these at least on a hike and very refreshing, very dry. Each sip leaves you wanting another one. Each can leaves you wanting another one. Um like we say here in San Diego, very crushable. Yeah. Uh, beer. Um did this come out of that program, uh, like the small batch program that you it, that you have? Up it, it did, um, you know, and, and in honesty, a lot of it was kind of a little bit derived uh, when we came out with uh, Otrevez, um, you know, that, that, and that was more of a true Goza style. Um, so, you know, trying to in, in incorporate something similar to that, um, but, but branded along, you know, it's like, this whole uh, little things branding is like, you know, hip and cool and, uh, and it looks neat, you know, and it's fun. Uh, so a lot of, a lot of the design behind this beer and the, uh, you know, how we talk about it is uh, it is, it's, it's a, it's a beer to be enjoyed. Um, you know, whether you're on a hike or whether you're with a bunch of friends poolside or whatever, it's uh, it's all about drinkability on this thing. Or after mowing the lawn. <laughs> you know, I always get super excited uh, going to the brewery in Chico there because there's always all sorts of beers on tap that, you know, nobody outside of theirs really gets to see or taste. And there's really good, well-made, exciting stuff there. And yeah. then to be able to sit there at that bar, that marvelous bar, uh is amazing. I mean, it's like a, the whole place is like a shrine. The brew house is too. It's it's amazing. I'll, I'll tell you, Paul. It, it, it sucks because I haven't been able to sit in that thing for uh, uh, since March. We've been uh, we close we closed down uh, when COVID hit, and we haven't really opened back up. Um, we've been kind of focusing on like curbside stuff, uh, but definitely, um, you know our our staffing. We've moved them over to the production side uh, to try to keep up with uh, that aspect of of our business, um, and and so uh, unfortunately, I haven't been able to enjoy the pub. But I, I did get in there a couple weeks ago. Uh, they had a beer on tap. They wanted me to uh, make sure it was it was good. It was Celebration Ale when it first came out. So oh, no. <laughs> I, I, I probably got a lot of. I have a lot of people cussing me out because uh, a lot of our staff hasn't been able to go over there and have a, uh, a true pint of celebration ale. So 
this is actually the perfect time to kind of transition our conversation before we get into our next beer. Um, it is celebration season right now, and we're not drinking celebration right now on beer for breakfast, but we all know how special celebration is. Um, Terrence, can you just kind of give us an update on what's going on with Sierra Nevada? Obviously, we're in the midst of a pandemic. You guys are up in Northern California. I'm pretty sure you're in the purple tier also. Uh, what is the haps with Sierra Nevada? Yeah, they they uh, they actually implemented the purple tier yesterday. We were uh, we were orange. I think we skipped a tier. My kid came home from school yesterday. He's like, "Dad, we skipped a tier. We went yeah. all the way to purple." Uh, so that sucks. Um, it it really is. Uh, I mean, it's a bummer. Um, you know, for us, um, l- like I said, we've been, you know, in all honesty, uh, Sierra Nevada has been pretty fortunate with um, just. The, the beer business uh, right now is uh, it's hit and miss. Um, we, you know, it, it, it's amazing when you actually think about it is, um, you know, years ago I used to, we were, we were big in draft beer. So on premise, so we were 40%, 60% bottles and cans. Um, and, and as we started losing share in bars, I used to get really upset. Like, Oh man, I really want to have our beer in a bar. Um, and but a double-edged sword. Now COVID hits, and uh, everyone's buying buying beer at the supermarkets. So uh, so our business is uh, is actually doing fairly well. And and, it, and it's really uh, it's a bummer for me because I have so many friends in the industry, and um, and you just feel for the little kind of small brewery. So if there's anything I could tell people out there, is like, okay, you can go to the supermarket and you can. Uh, get you some Sierra Nevada or some Carl Strauss and take it home. But uh, visit some of these small breweries um, and and pick up some Crowlers and Growlers because uh, uh, they're hurting. And so that uh, I mean, uh, Celebration Ale is really good too. By the way, you got to go pick some of that. Up. So, uh, well, I also think that that's very important to to point out that you know, yeah, Sierra Nevada it's, it's a brand that we've known for forty years now, but this is still an independently owned craft brewery. It's not like some conglomerate that owns it. So, like, you're still seeing the people who are making your beer, even from Sierra Nevada, which is why it's so important to continue to support independent craft beer. Yep. Family, 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 family owned, owned right there. <laughs> op- operated and argued over, we say, you know? Yeah. Hey, cheers, to Ken, cheers to Ken Grossman as well. I, I bet, I've been in those arguments, so I know. <laughs> Uh, let's transition over into the Dankful IPA, generously hopped, coming in at 7.4% ABV. Uh, I'm not going to lie, Terrence, I drank a lot of this over the weekend. I had one of them, and I was like, ooh, I went celebration on Saturday. I went Dankful on Sunday, and I was hurting on Monday. So... Ah. <laughs> So, so this is a this is a fun little beer. Um, this kind of uh, comes off of some, you know, we're always kind of making uh, different style IPAs uh, for our restaurant and pub, and uh, we've done a few, you know, different releases uh, uh, over, over time. And and so a couple years ago, we came out with uh, Thanksgiving uh, for this time of the season. Um, and so that's kind of where this this name derived from, and the fact that it's a, a hoppy IPA. Um, uh, but also, too, is it kind of ladders up. We have a program uh, where we're taking uh, proceeds from all the sales of our beer, and we're donating a uh, million dollars over the course of a year uh, to different nonprofits. Uh, we started out with uh, uh, a non nonprofit, um, uh, World Central Kitchen. Uh, donating a quarter of a million dollars uh, to their program that, you know, if, if you don't know, Jose Andreas, uh, famous chef, uh, goes around the world really and, and feeds uh, people in need due to usually, uh, you know, a lot of it, hurricanes or the yeah. wildfire. And that's really actually how we got to know him. We got to know him through the the wildfires up here um, in in Northern California and all over California, right? Yeah, uh, Resilience IPA. Yeah, Resilience IPA. That's what that was formed after. And that was just right up in our neighborhood. We had 50 employees that lost homes uh, during that fire. Uh, just horrific stories of people getting out uh, barely with their lives out of that town. And and it was a really a, a, 
a trying time for uh, Butte County and uh, the Chico area. We ended up having an influx of like, uh, I think it ended up being 20, 000, over 20,000 people that moved into our community uh, that had lost homes uh, up in paradise. And, and so we actually uh, were, were donating sweatshirts and, you know, trying to feed pe feed people and clothe people. Uh, and then World Central Kitchen came and uh, they came to Butte County and uh, they decided to do Thanksgiving dinner for everybody. And uh, so we donated our time, we donated our restaurant and uh, our resources. Uh, and and out of it, like I had never, I never, I didn't even know who uh, Jose Andreas was. And and here I was, I was, I was sitting there. Uh, I was, uh, I was like the coat check guy at the front, you know, donating my time. And, uh, and here comes this guy and, and, you know, French accent. And he's like making some comments about like, this is really weird. I'm at a brewery and I can't drink beer because we didn't want to serve beer because there was, literally, there was literally five or six different places in town that were serving food. And if we said we had beer available, everyone would have come to our place, you know? So, uh, so we decided no beer and, uh, and I'm kind of like looking at the guy and, and he's kind of complaining, not complaining, but kind of <laughs> complaining, and, uh, which I don't blame him. I was thirsty too. Uh, and and so we, anyways, our, uh, uh, one of our uh, main managers there, he looks over at me and he goes, take him upstairs and drink some beer with him. And I'm like, oh, okay. All right. I'll take him upstairs. And that's whenever I found out who he was. It was just him and I in a room shooting the shit um, and, and, and drinking, excuse my language, uh, and, and drinking a beer and, um, you know, it, it was really, uh, it was, it was really cool, you know, and, and, and to see what he does and his organization does to, uh, to take care of people. And, and then, uh, just recently, uh, we're donating to some local nonprofits in the San Francisco Bay area to, uh, feed, uh, people in need. That's so, amazing. Yeah. So what an excellent story that is. I, I mean, I really look up to the chef. He's, he's like a saint. I mean, he's almost up there with mother Teresa, all yeah. the things he's done for people all over the world in times of need, Puerto Rico, Central America, all over the place. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm sure he's going to be in Nicaragua here pretty soon, right? I mean, yeah. And as a fellow, as a fellow deadhead, I have to say I am grateful uh, for all the all the things that you guys have done on you know with resilience and just you know all of that. You guys are the you know the saintly brewer out there that that helps people in times of need and. And you make saintly beer. Uh, this Dankful is amazing. I'm anxious to hear what hop varieties go in this, and whether okay. or not you you've used the uh, torpedo in this. I, I told I told you uh, I told you I had to get a cheat sheet for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's got seven different hops. Uh, it comes oh, in at 50, 55 IBU, so it's not. It's got a. You know, I would say this is definitely along the lines more of a West Coast style IPA. Uh, it's got that, and, and and honestly, you know, it's got a San Diego bitterness to it, right? Yes, um, it does. And, yeah, and, and I mean that in an endearing way. I love, I love uh, drinking beers in San Diego. One of the things this has in it, though, too, it's got a little kiss of rye malt in it. Uh, oh, okay. So that adds a little bit of uh, kind of a little spiciness at it, but it's got a uh, Columbus in the bitter. Uh, it's got Chinook, uh, Mosaic, Equinot, uh, Nelson Sauvin. Uh, Idaho seven, and then it has the Zappa hop. So, all right. Um, so you've got a bunch of you're blending the old with the new, a bunch right. of the old C hops with, yeah. and Zappa is a pretty new variety. I think that was uh, Danielle, I think that was what came out of New Mexico, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's the one we actually we've done, uh, we've done a little bit of work with, um, uh, with uh, the Zappa Foundation, uh, so Frank Zappa's foundation, uh, Ahmet Zappa, he might even be listening. Uh, we, we made a beer with them, a couple beers with them, um, uh, Zappa's Wild Stash, uh, to name one of them, uh, but we're hoping to maybe do some work with them and work with that hop. It's really, it is, you know, I, I find that hop to, uh, that, that actually delivers a lot of the dankiness in this beer. It just kind of gives it that, uh, I think everybody knows what I'm talking about when I say the dankiness. Uh, oh yeah. Here, let me tell you what, if any of the Zappas ever want to come on beer for breakfast and talk beer or anything else, whatever, like, let okay. me know. All right, cool. We, we got we got the connection. Maybe that maybe that gives me the end uh, to make the uh, uh, 
Zappa's wild stash again, and uh, and we can uh, premiere it on your show. I mean, you know, <laughs> anything's possible. <laughs> it's a Dweezil or mu Moon Unit, they're all welcome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, going back to your guys' initiative and going into uh, nonprofits, so basically over the next year, if I'm understanding this correctly, if you buy any beer from Sierra Nevada, it is going towards these nonprofits. Is that yeah. right? Yes. Yep. Yep. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really, uh, I mean, it's, you know, I, I, I talk about that a little bit, you know, whenever I was telling you about the resilience thing. And, and I remember when that was all kind of going down and it was, you know, I mean, like, I, like I said, you had 50 employees that lost their homes. We had, you know, friends uh, that lost their homes. Um, and, and I remember after we kind of got done with that whole thing of uh, looking at Ken Grossman, our owner, uh, and just sitting down with him and just going, you know, this is probably going to end up being one of the proudest moments uh, in our professional career. And it, and it didn't have anything to do with, uh, you know, uh, sure, we make, I think we make great beer. Pale Ale's awesome. And, it, and it's really done a lot for craft beer industry and uh, built up a lot of, you know, small brewers uh, to give them the, you know, inspiration to do it themselves. Uh, but really, when it when it comes down to it, some of the greatest things I think we've done as a company is really help the community and um, help our humankind. You I'll know. tell you the yeah. um, amount of pride that came out of every brewery that got to put up at Tin Tacker once you all received their portion of the donation. The pride that every one of those brewers putting up in their brewery, it was moving. Like, and every time I see one of those, I'm just like, yes, this is what the craft beer community is about. It is about helping each other. It is about helping the community. And I just think it's a really amazing thing. So thank you to Sierra Nevada for everything you guys are doing to continue these things going on. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes. Uh, this this beer, if I can make one more point, it, it tastes like it's got like a fresh hop or wet hop like freshness to it. I mean, anybody who's been to Chico and they do a tour of the brewery and they, they walk by the hop room where they use whole fresh bales of, you know, full cone hops um the smell there is the best smell in the world uh yeah. really on top of it and but this beer as soon as you pop the can you get fresh oh, yeah. hops coming off of it yeah. it's amazing yeah. yep definitely and it, it, it um you know this one is uh we've changed things a little bit um sorry my, my background or my my light here is my actual computer, uh, my other <laughs> computer in front of me. So, gotta gotta wave wave the mouse a couple times just to get my so you can see my face again. Uh, but uh, we've actually we've switched some things around with some of our newer beers. We use cryo hops uh, a little bit, um, you know, but we st try to focus on uh, whole cone hops, uh, especially in the kettle. Uh, but when we're dry hopping, uh, this does have some cryo hops in it. It's got some of the some of the hops are actually torpedoed, uh, so they're whole cone hops that are uh, in the torpedo. So little 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 of all of it. So again, kind Fantastic. of going back, going back to what you said, Paul, is like a little bit of like kind of our old technology and our new technology, uh, both of them kind of combined together to make this beer. I'll cheers you to that. It's it's phenomenal. It's very it's fantastic. Um, I've got to recommend this to a lot of people. True that, and uh, you can find Sierra Nevada at most grocery stores, your better bottle shops. You can find Sierra Nevada pretty much anywhere. And remember, Sierra Nevada is still a family operated brewery. I know that we all know them so well, but this is still an independent brewery, and your dollars super matter. Um. Terrence, brand manager from Sierra Nevada. Thank you so much for joining Paul yes. and I for Beer for Breakfast. Yes, and I, I'll tell Paul, you know, we did that collaboration uh, a couple years ago, uh, North yep. by South. Uh, yep. we, should probably, so we, should, we, should, we should probably get together and uh, do something like that again. Uh, I would I would love that. That was fun. That was a red IPA. It was. Yep. I still, you know, have fond memories of that. That would be amazing. I would yep. love to. As just a I, consumer, if memory serves me correctly, it was like taking red trolley. It definitely is. Uh, two of our two of our shining examples of uh, kind of West Coast style beers. So uh, that well, was a really fun. That was a fun project. Terrence, I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> hey, <laughs> definitely interesting. 
competition. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and by the way, I still I still carry because uh, you guys gave me one of those big massive crowlers, and those are my uh, I fill those sometimes with beer, uh, but mainly with water whenever I'm out kayaking. And everybody <laughs> always says like, "Oh wow, those are really cool," you know. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. I'll send some more up for the fam or whatever. All right. For friends and whatever sharing. Sounds good. Well, thank cheers. You. I was going to say, I'm sorry, Daniel. No, go cheers for it. Cheers again on 40 years. 40 years. Huge. Deal. That's amazing. <laughs> and oh, Steve right. Dressler, if you're out there, cheers, buddy. Nice job. Right on. I, I'm going to have, I'm having lunch with him on Friday. I'll tell him hi. All right. Please do. And also, please send our uh, love and thank you over to Ken Grossman, owner of Sierra Nevada. If it weren't for him, my gosh, what would we be drinking right now? Um, and be sure to join Paul and I and as well as Marty on Friday morning at 910 for Beer for Breakfast on the radio on 91X. We will be drinking beer from Sierra Nevada that morning. So crack open a beer and enjoy it with us. And let's do one big, huge cheers to independently owned craft beer and radio in California. Cheers. Woo! Beer for breakfast. 91X.